So good to great. Goldilocks rule states that human experience peak motivation when working on tasks that are right on the edge of their current abilities. So human beings peak their peak motivation when we're actually challenged a little bit. So last, last week we talked about beta waves and beta waves are when you break the ice with something new. And this is from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. So the greatest threat to success is not failure, but boredom. As habits become routine, they become less interesting and less satisfied. We get bored. So again, there's some challenge there with it, but there's also the matter of it's the ability to keep going when work isn't exciting that makes the difference. So professionals stick to the schedule. Amateurs let life get in the way. So professionally, we're looking all to be, again, we kind of set a tone in our first session, acting as a well-being influencer, to actually be a professional well-being influencer, whether you have paid for that or not. To sound to send a well-being influence, just like what you've been doing, Suzanne, with looking folks in the eye, making those connections. So the four laws of behavior change. So if there is a challenge with following through with that habits chart, these are some things to consider. Make it obvious. So you put that chart in an obvious place. Make the cues of good habits obvious in your environment. Eliminate bad habits by reducing the exposure to the cue that causes it. I know when in our house, if we if we have, we buy some chips or something like that, and we put them on the counter. It's so easy to to get into that. But if we put say you know we put our I like having grapes and stuff. We put grapes or something fruit on on the counter there. It's so it's visible. So making it obvious, make it attractive. So in terms of what we're doing here together, join a culture where your desired behavior is the normal behavior. The normal behavior of the tribe often overpowers the desire behavior of the individual. Okay, so again, if we're having a time keeping things on our own, again, that's what's great about having a group session together and a group consideration or group forum there where we actually help to affirm a culture that it's easier for us to abide with staying with, you'd say, for what we're focusing on, on healthy habits. Make it easy. So create an environment where doing the right thing is as easy as possible. So some people say, you know, if they want to go out and run in the morning or at least take a walk, they, they put their shoes right at the front door or right real nearby. So it's easy. There's no friction of getting to their, their shoes or their, their walking shoes to go outside with. And if you want to break a habit, you kind of make friction of putting things away, like putting putting the chips in a far away place in the cabinet, so you have to reach for them. So if there's friction in that involved, it, it's not as easy. But to, to do the right thing is to make it easy, accessible. Make it satisfying. So we've been exploring with the chart. Position yourself for feeling successful. Habit tracking progress. So the, the habit tracking sheet is one way of, of feeling successful as we go through that at night. And there's other ways too. So we want to have at least enough challenge, but not making it out of our challenge where we don't feel successful with a certain endeavor, but where we can feel like we're accomplishing something step by step. So these are the four laws of behavior change, making it obvious, making it attractive, making it easy, making it satisfying. Now, I, I just put out some examples here, but if you, if you look at the book Atomic Habits, it goes into a little more detail. So tonight, today is our Essentials for Physical Well-Being Part 2. And we talked about this, well-being, setting up the conditions for well-being, structurally, heart-wise, where we're extending a field. And then when things come along, like trauma or toxins, and how we think and feel about things, if, if they're not healthy in this regard, you can say our field begins to collapse. Our heart can start beating in an aberrant way. Our nerves can get irritating, contracting muscles, causing one leg to be shorter than the other. And then we just don't feel well. And this is where you want to see, okay, if we don't feel well, you know, what's happening with our bodies where our resilience may be lost. We feel a dis-ease in our body. And then we want to see what it takes for our resilient capability. And that relates to, again, looking at where we are in terms of assessments, blood, hair, urine. We looked at body balancing care, 
lifestyle choices actually last last week last session and all all along to see how we can actually move along if we're feeling if we're in this state how we can move along into a greater healthy state so this session we'll be looking at health assessments and natural support in this respect all along being in essence, a well-being influence, knowing well-being for ourselves. And as we know for ourselves, we can influence the world accordingly. So natural support to start with. So supplementation. Now, there's work that I did some years ago called biological terrain work, where we recognized that it was the condition of the host that really mattered, whether we could fight a disease. So with biological terrain work that I had done, we looked at how important minerals are. And minerals in our body provide, you can say, runways or elements, or you can say, allowing for the universal forces that should move through our body to have contact points to actually move through our system, through our, our meridian pattern. Antioxidants. Antioxidants, in the, world, the way the world is today, where it's heavy oxidation, things, you know, you can see cars rusting, but the same thing with our bodies and helping to prevent that elements like vitamin C, vitamin E, as, as well as other antioxidants. Essential fatty acids are important for anti-inflammatory, but also they're great for to support, supporting brain function. Drainage remedies. Now, because the world is toxic, things can build up in our system. So consider taking on a daily basis some kind of drainage remedy, which could be in the form of homeo homeopathic, a herbal, a botanical, or an enzyme. Some people take enzymes before they go to sleep, so it helps clean up their lymphatic system during the night. And then the sun, you know, vitamin D, vitamin K, magnesium, but, you know, getting out in the sun, how important that is. And if you're not getting enough, and even the way we live, you know, the latitudes we live in, it's, it's pretty important that we do supplement with vitamin D and vitamin K together, and sometimes assistance is with magnesium. Okay, technology. Now, technology in the form of microcurrent or laser. Now, Debbie can tell you a little more about laser work. Uh, right now, I've been favoring using microcurrent, and both of these can assist with pain, assist with brain, assist with body support when we're sick. So it's helpful technology, and there's home units you actually you can purchase for yourself in order to have something like that technology-wise. Sensory input technology. Now, there's some work, there's some technology using bioneural beats and isochronic tones, and it's been put together in a system called BrainTap or a technology. And it's something you can listen to through your earbuds, or there's a, actually a headset. And what that does, it actually assists to provide good sensory input into your nervous system to help shift things. And when you're having a time doing it on your own, I find the brain tap is a great technology to, to help do it for you. So it encourages healthy brainwave states and it does it for you. Now, ideally it's good to do it for yourself. And this is where heart math comes in using an HRV sensor, a heart rate variability sensor. This is where you need to have the self-discipline to balance your HRV on your own. So there's units you can buy to actually practice with to do it consciously for yourself. So ideally, it's good to do it constantly for yourself, but if you're having challenges or actually alternating back and forth, sometimes you just want to relax. Instead of watching TV, using brain tap can be a good way of actually resetting your nervous system. Okay, other tools, there's something called a vitality swing or something called a chi machine where it swings your legs back and forth to circulate your lymphatic system while you're taking a break or a nap. There's a, something called a power plate that helps with bone density, where you just stand on it and it kind of vibrates your body. So there's technology, technology tools for natural support. So assessments to help determine what you need. Blood. Okay, inflammatory markers. Because 14 out of the 15 major killers in today's world are caused, are essentially caused from inf inflammation. You want to see what's going on with your inflammatory markers. So CRP stands for C-reactive protein. Sed rates, you've probably heard of that. And then galactin-3 is a marker that checks for inflammation as well as fibrosis. So over time, if you have a degree of inflammation, your, your tissue can start to fibrose. And the galactin-3 is a marker to see, see a, a range with that. 
CA markers. Now, cancer being almost one out of two people at some point are diagnosed with cancer. So you want to see where you're at and then see where you're at. And hopefully your markers are within range, but then you want to check them over time to make sure they're not trending upwards, which is setting the stage you can say for a pathology to develop within your system. And there's other markers called tissue breakdown markers, which can give you an idea of what's happening there too, which are creatine kinase and LDH. Okay, Cleveland heart panel inflammation markers, now heart disease or, or heart attacks are the number one cause of death. So there is a marker called MPO that I feel anyone aging needs to have done because it's a marker to see if you're prone to having a stroke or a heart attack. So you may not want to know, but actually, if you do know, you can kind of head things off at the pass. Other vitamin D you want to have checked. Again, more and more doctors are checking that for you, but vitamin D plays a lot of roles in our bodies, especially helping with your intestine. Your iron levels, you know, for some of, some of us, iron levels might run high, and there's something, a condition called hemochromatosis. And a lot of doctors don't look for this, but it's kind of a hidden condition that more than not, a, a lot of folks actually have. H1C, if, you, if I'm kind of going faster, if you have any questions, write them down and then we'll discuss them afterwards. A1C is your blood sugar over time. Again, blood sugar levels have a lot to do with your brain health over time. Thyroid antibodies, you want to check to see if you have those escalating because that can relate to a possible autoimmune disease happening within your system. And then estrogen levels, because we're exposed to so many toxins in the world, our estrogen levels can raise. And if they raise, that can set the stage for cancer. Okay, other assessments. Heavy metals, the world is full of heavy metals. We're breathing them all the time. We're ingesting them in our water. We're eating them too in our food. So you want to, we want to monitor to see if we're, if we're having a heavy metal load in our system. And heavy metals can interfere with the natural enzyme systems that should work in the body. So instead of calcium working properly to help certain areas, that the heavy metal might be dislodged. That calcium may be dislodged by a heavy metal, which can cause an interference in natural enzyme functioning. So you want to check for mercury, lead, aluminum, micro gut ball microbiome gut testings using stool to see for healthy versus unhealthy intestinal bacteria. So especially if you're having gut concerns, you can check for pathogens like parasites, candida. Okay, aging assessment monitoring. So as we do get older, there are some aging assessment monitoring. There's a true age test that tests how, see how fast or slow your body is aging. And now some people are, are recognizing that aging is the number one cause of disease, but to actually put that in more of a succinct description, if you're aging faster, age-related diseases are gonna pop up faster. And there's ways of checking for that, and there's ways of actually helping to slow that down. And then there's a test called brain span, which checks for brain and cognitive health. Lifestyle genetic testing with longevity report. This is a saliva test. So this is a test I've been putting a lot of weight to because it gives a lot of information. But before I go into the description of that by the DNA company, the, comp the company that I recommend is addressing the concerns about DNA. So whenever I mention DNA testing, you know, some folks automatically have a reaction to that because of security concerns. Now, I like the DNA company because they don't sell data. They, they keep that data private. And I feel, I feel safe with the CEO of the company. So I, I feel like they're, they're providing a, a tremendous service in the testing that they're providing. Now, for some folks, they don't want to know. That's, you know, that's highly to be respected. But it's, it's always our conscious choice, whether we want to know or not. If, if you're inter interested, I, I'd encourage you to, to look at genetics. So. Going from good to great, another example from Atomic Habits, is habits are easier when they align with your natural abilities. Choose the habits that best suit you. Genes provide a powerful advantage in favorable circumstances and serious disadvantages in unfavorable circumstances. So just for example, um, you know, they say folks who have, uh, who are on the OSPEC, Asperger's spectrum, autism there, they do very well with routine repetition 
that's favorable circumstances for them. But if you put them in an overly stimulated situation, that, that's not very favorable for them. Genes do not eliminate the need for hard work. They clarify it. They tell us what to work hard on. So let's look at this a little bit more. So these are some elements in the genomic testing. And with this testing, it's not testing to see what disease you're going to get. It's more look, looking to see how you can optimize your health relative to our mood and behavior. Now, I love, I love this test because of this element, where it actually it, genetically, you can see a little bit more deeper tendencies that you have mood and behavior wise. And some, some things we already know our tendencies for, but other things that may unravel or uncover things we may not have been so conscious of. And once we are, then when that tendency comes up, then we can be a little bit more, you can say, cognizant of actually addressing it in the moment. So diet and nutrition. Now, one thing with mood and behavior, some, some genes relate to individuals who have binge tendencies, which can relate to our diet and nutrition. But it also has genetics related to how much fat intake you might be able to tolerate. And there's a big thing with the ketogenic diet, which is a good diet for some, but for some folks, it's not good for them because genetically they weren't designed to have a lot of fat in their diet. Immunity and detox. Now, this is a big one in today's world because of our experience with the pandemic, you know, folks being kind of unsure of whether they can handle things that may come along. So you want to see genetically if you are compromised with your immune function or your detoxification function, you want to see how you can support that. Hormones and exercise. So here you can see if there's a tendency, actually, just for example, exercise. Genetically, some people more, may be more designed to do weightlifting or resistance training compared to cardio, or it might be just the opposite. Sleep genetics to see how well your circadian rhythms are, if you're more likely to be affected by blue light at night. Cardiovascular genetics related to the fact that you might have more of a tendency for inflammation in your cardiovascular system. And then if you do, then as you age, then for sure you, you want to be checked for things like inflammation markers, like MPO. And longevity. Now, there's actually a longevity gene that can tell whether you have advanced longevity potential or superhuman longevity potential, which is kind of interesting to see. So, you know, that's why I love this so much because it's not, again, it's not about disease. It's about optimizing our health. And if there's a compromise with any one of these genetic factors in our background, then we, we can support that. In terms of bone health, just for example, genomics of bone health. And some people, bone health de deteriorates at a faster rate than normal. Genetics play an important role in overall bone health and longevity. Your vitamin D genes control your body's relationship with vitamin D. And which is the most important, which is the most important compound related to bone health alongside vitamin K2. So you know, as we get older, we, again, we want to keep our bones healthy and vitamin D and vitamin K play a part with that. Biodefense genomics, again, having the assurance our body can handle things that come along. So Biodefense is your body's ability to protect itself from infections, inflammation, and aging in general. Biodefense is your body's balance between inflammation and detoxification. Ideally, there is a minimal presence of long-term inflammation with quick and agile detoxification processes. Detoxification serves to minimize and clean up inflammation. So is that interesting? Just to slow down for a second. When we get inflamed, that inflammation can stay in our system unless we have detoxification ability to actually clear that inflammation. So a patient of mine let me know the other day, his ankle's still swollen. So I've been encouraging him to get this DNA test because most likely he's have his, he has a problem with, he has a compromised detoxification system, which is causing the inflammation to stay in a system longer than it should. Several genes and gene pathways influence these cellular processes. Okay, what can I learn from this test? The goal of this test is to evaluate the roles that your genes play in the efficiency of several important biological and cellular processes in your body. Learn how well your body is performing the tests necessary to maintain optimal health and wellness. 
and where there's an opportunity to make diet, lifestyle, and environmental changes that can set you up for the most optimal health outcomes. It narrows down. Now, some folks come and see me and they, they come in with bag loads of supplements. So, and they say, you know, they've had enough taken so many things, but it can narrow down genetically what your body needs, lifestyle wise, in terms of recommendations and supplement need. So, summing up our essentials for physical well being for now, there's always more. So, the past week and this week, last week we talked about lifestyle choices. Tonight, today, we talked about assessments and natural support. But let me read you this quotation. The physical body needs control. It needs direction. It needs guidance. It needs care. It needs love. When this is provided, we become a whole person in position to serve in love, to extend love, to radiate love to others. Now, again, we're, we're looking to be well being influencers. And another way of describing that as is being in position to extend love, to radiate love to others. So it is. It, so it is, we become responsible for our physical bodies. We know how to handle it. We know how to take care of the requirements. So that's a quotation by Martin Cecil, who's been a mentor to many, and regarding looking to see how we can put it all together. Now, now let's do some of our own thinking and let's personally consider. So if you have a pen or pencil, if you have a, let me see if you have a pen or a pencil in your hand. Okay, great, Suzanne. Anybody else have a pen or a pencil in their hand? Great. Okay, let's personally consider this question for ourselves. What direction, guidance, care, and love is needed for your physical body so that you may enhance your ability to be a well being influencer? So let's let's take a few minutes on our own to consider that question. <laughs> 